HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have the latest playoff highlights from Hiller Girls Basketball and Boys Hockey. Matt Clark will fill you in with upcoming HCAM programming with our HCAM Insider and Hopkinton Public Schools hosted a public safety forum. But first, some happenings in town you should know about. This past week, school was dismissed early Wednesday and closed on Thursday and Friday due to a nor'easter that hit the area, dropping nearly a foot of snow. The storm forced numerous closures, knocked down trees and power lines, and knocked power out to more than half of Hopkinton and heavily affected numerous other towns. Senator Karen Spilka stopped by the HCAM studios and gave us an update on restoring power in the area. Uh, can you talk about what you have been doing to assist with uh, recuperating from the storms? Sure. Um, I have a um, close relationship with Eversource, you know, over these last, you know, few months from working to, to prevent the gas gate from coming to, to Hopkinton um, or, uh, or even expanding for them to expand, working with uh, John Cotino and Norman Kamalo and, and Rep Dykema and others and the Board of Selectmen in town to, to prevent that from happening. So, um, and I've worked with Eversource for a while in hearing from my communities how many people still were without power last night and this morning. Um, I spoke with uh, town manager Kamalo this morning to let him know that I had already called Eversource and asked them to get crews in Hopkinton and the surrounding towns in Metro West that too many people were still without power, without electricity, without heat, and it was becoming a dangerous situation for for folks, whether they be you know infants all the way up to, to our seniors, and that we needed to remedy this. So I know they did send crews out to Hopkinton and the surrounding towns, and I'm getting updated regularly. I'm hearing many of the families, many of the households have had their power restored and by tomorrow the hope is and they're, they're telling me uh, the restoration should be complete. This past week Hopkinton Public Schools hosted a public safety forum to discuss and address the ongoing safety concerns in our schools. Hopkinton Public Schools hosted a public forum regarding safety. The panelists featured several individuals who play key roles in school and community security. The Director of Technology, Ashok Ghosh, talked about some of the technical measures that are being taken to secure schools. After the audit, some of the changes we made to the local securities were as follows. Um, we started to develop and maintain a common user database uh, for security for both town and, and school employees. Uh, and move away from the traditional lock and key systems to an electronic digital key fob system, which is centrally managed and organized. Uh, and so, for example, if someone um, leaves the district or is fired for some reason, we can immediately disable that key fob without having a lot of extra work to go and re-key all of the doors uh, in a building. So beyond cost savings, it's, it's a much easier system to manage, and it's a much more secure system. Uh, in addition to that, we put access controllers, um, which work with these key fobs at all of the buildings uh, throughout the district, uh, including the central admin building, uh, to allow uh, staff and key personnel to enter uh, buildings that they had permission to be in. Uh, over the last several years, we started, uh, once the uh, access controllers and key fobs were distributed and staff were trained on that, we started to implement perimeter cameras on those key doors where these access controllers were, so we'd have some insight into people entering and leaving the building uh, in those key areas. 
Um, beyond that, we started to uh, create double entry points at all of the school buildings. Uh, those air gap spaces where you'll see out here on the left in the high school, uh, where you have to be buzzed into a place and then buzzed in again uh, to create an extra level of safety and security between outside and inside uh, of the facilities. Uh, beyond that, we upgraded over the last two years all of the alarm systems in the four buildings, which is the middle school, high school, obviously, center is coming with a new building, Marathon School, and then Elmwood. All have new uh, alarm intrusion detection systems that are now in place and operational, which gives uh, the building security not only at night when we're away from the building, but during the day when the building is occupied. So we now have eyes and ears kind of on all the doors uh, in the main buildings on campus. Uh, and in the next uh, several weeks, the month, we'll also have notifications that are triggered on key door events. So if a student perhaps leaves a door open or propped, uh, key personnel will get an email notifying uh, that building and, and the resource officer that do that door is left ajar and we can go and, and deal with that. So before the, those systems were put in place, we didn't really have that level uh, of kind of access uh, over the perimeter doors besides physically going and checking all them. So it makes it a much more efficient system. One of the biggest things we talk about all the technology and the security mes uh, measures, but the biggest thing, and what we saw happen down in Florida, is prevention. There was, what, 36 red flags down there. If I had one red flag go unnoticed, you know, I would consider myself a failure at my job. We work together as a great group, and uh, the incident crisis teams, Anytime we get information of any possible threat to our children at this school, we are on top of it, we vet it thoroughly, we take action when we have to. So I'm just uh, very proud to be a chief of the Hopkins Police Department, work with all the great men and women, and very proud to be part of this uh, collaborative effort to make sure that the children in the Hopkins school system are under the, uh, the safest plan it could possibly be. To us, it's just giving the students a voice and, and acknowledging, uh, but also working with the staff, equipping them with the tools to be able to have some of these conversations. We have six guidance counselors at the high school, three adjustment counselors, and a school psychologist. We work very closely with Denise. Um, and one of our programs that we started uh, a few years ago is called our START program. I know this doesn't necessarily answer your question, but it's right through those doors over there, and it works with students that are returning from extended absences, uh, and oftentimes from mental illness. And so, uh, we have seen our reduction of hospitalizations for students for mental illness uh, decrease dramatically, uh, and almost 0% uh, of students who have got hospitalized have been re-hospitalized since we've implemented this, this program. So, that's another effort that we are making to try to work with the students and hear from the students and, and support families and students when it comes to school safety and, and ensuring a, a nurturing environment. To view the full forum, head over to the HCAM YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV, or our website, HCAM.TV. Coming up next on HCAM News, Hiller girls basketball and boys hockey continue on in the playoffs. Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider, plus a whole lot more. You're tuned into HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome back to HCAM News. Hopkinton Hillers Hockey finished the regular season 17-2-1 and, and continues to fight on in the playoffs. Here is a look at this past week's highlights. On Saturday, March 3rd, the Hopkinton Hillers took on Dover Sherborne in the first round of the South Division III sectional playoffs. In the first period, the Hillers got the scoring started less than a minute in. Support their beloved Hopkinton Hillers hockey team in this playoff matchup. The winner of this game will advance to play at Gallo Arena in Bourne against Dartmouth. Over on the far side, Walsh puts it into the neutral zone towards Hamlet. Here comes Delaney, looking for the shot, there's a goal! Right off the bat, Owen Delaney, welcome back! one nothing Hillers! About nine minutes of play later, Dover Sherborne responded. Now Hamlet doing battle with Markin. Rolling the corner, left out in front, there's a Dover Sherborne goal! Wow! Hey, Max Arnone getting the shot on that one. Yeah, the defense just lost him there, he was sitting on the corner. You gotta pick him up, be on him. 
Well, Eric, maybe uh, Dover Sherborne came to play today, too. Yeah, you can throw out the regular season. I know the Hill is 1-2-0, but this is playoff hockey. It's totally different, so. The game wouldn't be tied for long. And the goaltending at Dover Sherborne's Aiden Britt has allowed them to very much be in this game. Lindquist up along the far side. Here he comes as he passes down to Walsh. Now over to the slot. Shot opportunity here. Delaney puts it in. Oh, and Delaney feeling it. Welcome back. 2.28 left to go. Another Hiller's goal. He was not going to be denied on that one. He saw the opening, made a nice move around, and just slid it off the backhand right into the corner. Hopkinton led 2-1 heading into the second period. On to the second period, the Hillers were quick to get back on the scoreboard. Oh, gets a stick on it. Trying to jam it out towards Abbott, but a number of Blue Raiders in the area as Markin puts it towards the near side. And that shot turned away by Simos, and then yeah. a secondary to Will Abbott. We there knew, he is. He knew they weren't going to keep them off the board for long. Will Abbott was just waiting for his opportunity to strike, and he does with 12-13 left in the second period. The Will Abbott goal would be the only goal for either team in the second. 3-1 Hillers heading to the third. In the third period, Hopkinton took over. Now yeah, it's stolen away. Abbott up to the near side on a break. Here comes Will Abbott. Around one skater into the slot. The backhander, and that's a goal! The Hillers do it again. They open the period with a goal. Will Abbott to DJ Sloan on a beauty of a pass, and Sloan puts it right in. Now this line has just been on absolute fire for half the season. It's a great play by Abbott, cutting to the middle. Sloan going right down there. What a beautiful backhand pass. It's a nice redirect by Sloan. The double overtime there. Legs might still be a little weak. I think their mindset is no matter what we do, we can't beat this team. That's a goal! Off the glove of Britt, a wrister by Andrew Gilbert. It looked like it was going to be another fantastic save by Britt, but he's unable to wrap it up. Well, that's a backbreaker right there. Sloan up the near side, into the right circle, leaves it out in front. That one is in. Will Abbott. Over the far side to Rogers. Rogers, another goal! Kyle Rogers just gets around a couple of Blue Raiders and wrists that one right past Britt. Icing on the cake. Four third period goals and the Hillers take down Dover Sherborne seven to one to advance on to the quarterfinals versus Dartmouth. On Tuesday, March 5th, the second seeded Hillers took on 10th seeded Dartmouth in the South Division III sectional quarterfinals at Gallo Ice Arena in Bourne. Sean Walsh got the first goal less than a minute in. Great, the first line has been playing. They did not want to interrupt the flow, so they put Owen Delaney on the second line as that one is turned away by the goalie Gamash, and there's a goal. Hillers get things started off on the right foot. It is a one to nothing lead. And putting that one in, it was Sean Walsh. Less than a minute into it, 58 seconds to be exact, Sean Walsh gets by Gamash, and it's 1-0 Hillers. After the Sean Walsh goal, Dartmouth kept threatening and eventually came up with a goal of their own. It's into the neutral zone, and a nice move to get by Temple, top of the circle, leaves that one out in front, and that's a goal for Dartmouth. Great puck distribution by Cote. Cote finds Bryce Souza, and Souza finds the net. Hold on. Sean Walsh trying to get a break on it. And here comes Dartmouth on the attack once again. Souza with possession. Leaves it behind for Nicolosi. Nicolosi in the high slot, trying to get that one by O'Leary. Out in front of the net, O'Leary wraps it up. A near goal there, scary situation. O'Leary able to cover it up. The Hillers responded a few minutes later. Owen Delaney. Now chased down by Hamlet, up on the far side corner, out in front, there's a goal! A beauty of a shot there for the Hillers. And that is just what the doctor ordered for Hopkinton, Owen Delaney coming through once again. It was a two to one lead for the Hillers heading into the second. Tommy Hamlet made it three to one less than a minute in. 
Charlie Gamache has been a busy goaltender today. Top of the circle, counter to Laney, finds it through, that's a goal! Tommy Hamlet got the stick on it to put it through! 3-1 Hillers! A few minutes later, Dartmouth responded. Yeah, a couple of Hillers left it out front for Souza, and Souza took care of it. Cote at the blue line. Cross over to the near side. This is really the first Hillers cover. There's a goal! Wow! That one just getting by O'Leary. Cullen Larabi kind of just wristed it. Not really expecting it to get by, but O'Leary mishandled it. And Dartmouth on the boards. It was a 3-2 Hillers lead heading to the third. In the third period, the Hillers exploded offensively. Going Delaney line out there now to try to switch up the luck. The wrister, and there's a goal! Wow! Andrew Gilbert powers it through! What a wrister that was! Gilbert says, you're not going to give us a goal, all right? Well, you're going to give us one now. You had two players in the Dartmouth zone still going at it as the Hillers were switching up the other three. And that's a goal! Simos is able to knock it in. Actually, that might have been Abbott. That might have been all Will Abbott. I believe it was. I thought Simos might have got the stick on it, but I think it was all Will Abbott. Simos with another opportunity. Leaves it for Sloan. Sloan puts that one in. No doubt about that. 2.56 left to go. DJ Sloan off a beauty of an assist from Steve Simos. Trying to leave that one in the slot as Will Abbott will turn it around. Trying to jam it in, and do we have another goal? Yeah, maybe. Let's wait for the signal. It looks like we do. Will Abbott scores the last goal. Four more goals for the Hillers in the third, and Hopkinton moves on to the semifinals to take on third-seeded Rockland with the 7-2 victory over Dartmouth. Hopkinton Hillers girls basketball also continues to play on in the postseason. This past week, the Hiller girls got two huge wins to advance on to the sectional finals. Goldwyn, Corby, Morningstar launches a three. She's Big, got it. huge three, nothing great, but net. Great shot by Lily. After taking down TBL rival Holliston in the first round, 52 to 27, on Saturday, March 3rd, the fourth-seeded Hopkinton Hillers girls basketball team hosted the fifth-seeded Medfield Warriors in the Central Division II sectional quarterfinals. Reagan spots up, buries a three. Senior forward Regan Caveney led the charge with 14 points and 11 rebounds. Hubner penetrates out, finds Reagan. Reagan lets it fly and got it. We got a one point game, Mike, 37-36. Pillars come storming back after being down by eight. Ivy Goglin had 13 points of her own. Heading to the fourth quarter, Ivy only had three points but took over in the final eight minutes. Clear out, Morningstar has a speed advantage. Nice job by Caveney. Smart move not to go up with it. Oh, great look inside. Ivy, nobody there, and she's got it. 43-40, Hillers by three. Goglin, Keevney really coming to life in this fourth quarter. McCarthy's gonna try to do it, she's the captain. Kinney again, comes up short. Keevney again with another rebound. She has been cleaning the glass. Again, she's gotta learn to throw that bounce pass. Reagan comes up off the backside of the rim, but Morningstar rips a rebound down. Smallest player on the court. She's going in, she's got room. Oh, and she does a great up and under, 45-40, Hillers, 111 to go. Got to play some good defense here now she and took, be awake. She took Kitty weak side there. Oh, there great Goglin. block by Goglin. Goglin with the rejection. Use your clock there, use wow. your clock, use your clock. With under a minute left, Callie Corby got the ball. Put the ball in Callie Corby's hands. Callie comes over half, she's going to get trapped. Nice job with it, nice job with it. Back up top. Callie lets one fly. Oh, oh my goodness, 49-42, wow. Kelly Corby hits the, that was the killer.
She hits the three, and that would be all she wrote. The Hillers grab the 49-42 victory over Medfield and advance on to the semifinals. Catch the lead, up four. Corby with it, steps back, three. Oh, oh the back for oh, Kelly oh, Corby. Oh, man. Knocks down the three, a huge shot. Eerily reminiscent of a three Medway hit to uh, take the lead late against Neshoba in the game before this one. And that gives Hopkinton a seven point lead going into halftime. Six huge points from Callie Corby. On Monday, March 5th, the fourth seeded Hopkinton Hillers girls took on first seeded Groton Dunstable at Clark University. And right at the halftime buzzer, Callie Corby with another postseason buzzer beater to send the Hillers into the halftime locker room up seven. Oh, nice Pass dig. inside, taken away. Caveney with the steal. Under About control. Eight second difference in the shot and game clock. Plenty of time. Doglin inside. There we go. Gets the right hand hook to fall. In the game, Ivy Goglin put up a team high 11 points and 12 rebounds. Like a third one. They got to take care of the ball a little better than that. Goglin brings it up. Pass over to Caveney. She launches a three, knocks it down. Regan Caveney added nine points and nine rebounds, as well as three assists. Ball up to Goglin. She finds Prawl oh, under the hoop. Nice, nice spin. Great move from Marissa Prawl. And Marissa Prawl came up with nine points as the Hillers took the game 43 to 39. Fourth seeded Hopkinton advances to the Central Division II sectional finals, and they will take on third seeded Medway at WPI game is currently scheduled for Saturday, March 10th at 5.15 p.m., but keep an eye on the MIAA brackets and the HCAM website as recent weather could bring changes to the MIAA schedule. The Hillers moving on. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channels. Here to tell you all about it is Matt Clark with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, March 9th at 5 p.m., local artists gather to share their poetry, writing, and music on a special open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. I arose and I boldly addressed her. Fair maid, what's the cause of your pain? On Monday, March 12th at 7.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Planning Board meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Tuesday, March 13th at 6.30 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, March 14th at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show, live on HCAM TV. And at 8 p.m., Terry Malisi puts together an appreciation dinner for Hopkinton's police and firefighters on a brand new episode of The Gathering. These are the main ingredients for the jambalaya beside the Creole seasonings. We've got cubed ham, sliced and dewy sausage. We have cubed cooked chicken breasts. And we have shrimp. So those are the main ingredients, plus we have rice. On Thursday, March 15th at 7 p.m., the Hopkinton School Committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. And on Friday, March 16th at 8 p.m., the Coffee Break hosts chat with Boston Marathon Athletic Director Dave McGillivray on a new episode of Hopkinton Coffee Break. And on HCAM Ed, the Hillers Girls Basketball Central Division II Finals vs. Medway game will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM's shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to take a look at upcoming events in town and the latest happenings throughout our community. 
If you have a Hopkinton-related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of your day. Hopkinton High School hosted their annual science and engineering fair. Many were in attendance as students showed off their projects. What's your project here about? Um, it's about jewelry and nickel and allergies. Um, we're both allergic to nickel and we wanted to find a solution to that problem. Yeah, we use nail polish, wax, toothpaste, and nickel guard to coat our nickel pieces with to see which one would work the best. The one that worked the best is nail polish, and nail polish is also the most affordable option as it completely covered all the nickel. Alright, and how long did this take you? About a month. The project was the effects of timing on student performances. I had two groups, and uh, group A, I said nothing about timing, and group B, I did tell them they were timed. Uh, group B, which was timing, did significantly worse, uh, interestingly enough, and group A, group A, which was untimed, did better. Alright, and uh, how long did this take you to do? Uh, well, both uh, classes, both two different classes, their same grades, uh, were tested on the same day. So, all they did was receive in about a day. participated this year. We had 29 projects with 49 students this year, which is one of our highest numbers in a long time. And all of these students, as the parents know, did this in addition to their regular coursework. So this was an extracurricular activity and class they took upon themselves to do this year. A lot of these students are doing sports and the play and lots of really difficult classes and found time to study something that was really important and special to them. Um, and they're great role models for the rest of our school in terms of being able to balance so many different things and pursue a passion. So I'd like to give a round of applause for all of our students. I'd like to start today by recognizing two special students who have participated in the science fair for multiple years.